In the previous video, I showed you how to configure basic settings on the HP MSR or HP Multi-Services Router. In this video, I'd like to configure the two HP 5800 switches. So I'm going to show you the initial configuration of the switches and then we're going to configure VLANs. Switch 1 has a PC connected to it on port 1 and we're going to put this PC into VLAN 2. Switch 2 has a PC connected on port 1 and we're going to put this PC into VLAN 3. We're going to set up the two 10 gig links between the switches as a link aggregation or bridge aggregation or using E-series terminology as a trunk. Be careful, on A-series devices a trunk means a tagged link, not a link aggregation. So the two ports where the PCs are connected to are going to be configured as access ports or untagged ports. Port 27 and 28 are going to be joined together in a bridge aggregation and set up as a trunk to allow VLAN traffic to traverse the link. So I'm going to connect to the console of the first switch and start it up. In PuTTY I'm going to select the serial port, COM1, speed is 9600 bits per second. Once again going to appearance, I'm going to change this to bold and font size 12. I'm going to go to the serial settings, change this to none. So I've set the settings in PuTTY to the recommended values for connecting to A-series devices. So I'm connected to the console. I'm going to power on the switch. As you can see the switch is starting. You can see that this is an HP 5824G switch. This is a very new switch. You can see that it's booting off the operating system in flash. Notice the bin file. You can see for example that this thing has 1 gig of memory, 750 megahertz CPU. So the application file is self decompressing. You can see the system is starting. And you can see the system is started up. User interface AUX0 is available. That is actually the console of the switch. The switch doesn't have an auxiliary port like a router. So that is actually the console of the switch. So I'm going to hit enter to get started. As you can see, this switch has a name of HP 5800 underscore SW1. If I type the command display current, or display current rather, you can see that the system name of this switch has been set. There's other configuration on the switch including VLAN information and other information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset the saved configuration on the switch and we warn that the saved configuration will be erased. I'm happy with that so I'm going to say yes. So you can see that the configuration file is cleared. If I type display saved configuration you can see that the config file doesn't exist. Typing the command DRR shows me the files in flash and I can see the operating system as an example and a few other files. So I'm going to use the command reboot to reboot the switch. We're told that the current configuration will be lost and then we asked do we want to save the current configuration. Now it's important that you read the prompts and don't just blindly answer them. It's very easy to hit Y now when in actual fact we should say no we don't want to save the current configuration. And then I'm going to say Y to reboot the switch. So you can see the switch is rebooting and hopefully when it comes back the switch will be reset to factory defaults. You can see the switch is starting up. You can see once again that it's an HP 5800 24G switch. It's starting the main application. Notice we could press Ctrl B to enter the extended boot menu. That only shows for a short period of time. So you have to be quick if you want to go into the boot menu. You can see the application is self-decompressing. 
and the switch is booting up. You can see that the system is starting. The switch says that the startup configuration file does not exist. And that's because we deleted the file. We deleted startup configuration. We told that retrieving the configuration file has failed, which is to be expected because we erased the configuration. The AUX port is now available. In other words, the console is available. And now if I hit enter, you can see that the default name is HP. So on all the equipment, the default name will be H3C, but this is a very new switch at the time of this recording. So the name of the switch is actually HP. I can type system view, hit enter. Notice I'm in system view. And now if I type display current config, I can see that this is Comware 520. The default system name of HP is displayed and various other defaults are displayed in the current configuration. So you can see all the ports in the switch. You can see the AUX port and VTY ports. This switch, as you can see, has 16 VTY lines and not just five. So once again, that kind of information is device dependent. Now in our diagram, this switch is gonna be configured as core one. It requires three IP addresses, 10.1.1.101, which is for VLAN one, 10.1.2.101, which is for VLAN two, and 10.1.3.101, which is for VLAN three. So I'm just gonna set up a basic configuration on the switch so that I can tell it to the switch and demonstrate configurations without a lot of background noise. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna configure the switch with a single IP address for VLAN one, enable Telnet on the switch, and then I'm gonna configure switch two with an IP address, rack the switches, and then Telnet to them remotely from my recording machine via the Cisco router and MSR. So on the switch, I'm gonna type the command VLAN one to create VLAN one, it's actually created by default. So that wasn't necessary, but would be necessary for other VLANs. And now to configure an IP address on VLAN one, I have to use the command interface VLAN one. And here I can specify an IP address of 10.1.1.101 with the relevant mask. And that assigns an IP address to VLAN one. So slightly different to what you'll do on an HPE series device. I find that the easiest way to understand this is that the VLAN command configures layer two information and the interface VLAN command configures layer three information. So now that I've configured an IP address on VLAN one, we have to enable Telnet on the switch. So to do that, I type system view, Telnet server enable. As you can see, the Telnet server has started I need to create a local user. So I'm gonna say local user admin. The user has been added. Service type telnet to allow this user to telnet. Password cipher HP. So the password will be encrypted. So for example, if I type display this, you can see the password is encrypted. However, I need to authorize the user. So authorization attribute level three, display this. So the user admin is now allowed to telnet to the switch and has been given authorization level three. Quit. User interface VTY and in this example, I'll just set up the first five Telnet lines. In the real world, you may configure more VTY lines or more Telnet lines. Authentication mode scheme. In other words, when we Telnet to the switch, we'll need to enter our username and password. Protocol inbound Telnet. User privilege level three. Save our configuration. So once again, I've configured an IP address on the switch in VLAN one. I've also 
enable Telnet on the switch. Notice here, if I type display brief interface or interface brief, I can see my layer three interface. In other words, VLAN one with the correct IP address. Notice the interface is down because all interfaces at layer two are down. No cables have been plugged in at the moment. One last thing we probably want to do is name the switch. So I'm going to say sysname or sysname core one. And I'll save the configuration again. So the configuration has been saved. So that's the configuration of core one. All I've done at the moment is configure an IP address on VLAN one. I've also enabled Telnet on the switch. I'm going to do something similar on core two, but I won't bore you showing you the full configuration. All I'm going to do on core two is give it an IP address and enable Telnet. That will allow me to rack the switches and Telnet directly to them. However, there's a small problem.